Good evening, friends. Uh, I would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you. Uh, thank you for joining us at, at the launch of the very first book from Basita. It's a pleasure sharing this moment with all of our dear ones. Uh, just a quick uh, background. I, I mean, I know you all know Basita from childhood, but then I just felt like sharing some of my thoughts here. Um, so Basita started to write at, at a very young age, say like about 10 years. Uh, that's when he started to write as we have observed. And I believe he initially started to uh, narrate stories in the form of short videos and then took inspiration from there to write short stories is, is my perspective. But I would love to hear more from him. So can we start the book launch? I request Vasant to come over and pass it as well. Hello, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, so just wanted to uh, introduce uh, Vasant. Vasant uh, happens to be a very good friend of mine as well. Uh, his full name is Vasant Shetty. Uh, I'm sure if you Google him, you will actually find out his re reputation. He's, he's, uh, he's a very well known, um, uh, I don't want to really call it an activist, but he works for the cause of Canada. Uh, he's, uh, he's a prolific writer. He has written several books and published them. Uh, he's also very, uh, he regularly writes columns in well-known uh, uh, Kannada dailies. Uh, he writes in English as well. Um, and, uh, uh, and so he, he's part of a, an organization that actually works towards modernization of uh, Kannada. So the book is titled, it's a collection of short stories. Uh, the, the title of the book is The Ancient Anarchist and Other Stories by uh, Basita. Uh, ancient Anarchist, the Ancient Anarchist is the name of one of the stories, which is a long short story or novella. Uh, so there are ten, there are eleven stories in the book. One of them is a uh, novella. So this is his uh, first book, so we need all of your encouragement and blessing and most importantly reading of his book. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so yeah, first of all I'd like to thank all of you once again for being here for this and uh, you know, it's a pleasure having you guys over for this. So yeah, um, I'd like to talk a, a little bit about how I started writing and how this book really came to be. Um, I actually talk a little about this in the preface but I'll just elaborate a little more. Uh, but when I was in the ninth grade, uh, we had a chapter about the French Revolution in history and there was this one section on the Jacobin Club and Maximilian Robespierre. So it left me wondering if it was necessary to always find some sort of purpose in life instead of just living it as it is and be happy. This might be too much of a philosophical interpretation of what he has written in a story but what I wanted to tell you is how truly enthralled by his book I was. Basita's simplicity in his writing was really captivating. So also I have a special request. I'd love your autograph on the copy of the book that I get. And yeah, he has two more books written uh, to be written by Basita and more success to come to him. So cheers to him. Let's have a round of applause for Basita. Thank you. Like that's what strikes the most amazing thing out of Basita is what I feel. Because he can, he has the ability to have intellectual conversations, philosophical conversations, and even political conversations. And the thing with Basta is, he doesn't just stick to the norm. And this I've seen, like, throughout, I've literally, like, analyzed this dude. Because this guy, even during COVID, when everyone would just sit at home and not do anything, this guy's like, you know what, let me just start telling stories. And he started uh, releasing videos once a week, right? And everyone was like, okay, this guy's actually doing something with his life. And initially, we're like, hey, <laughs> it's easy for us to do, but some of us actually try doing it. It's very, very difficult to pull it off. And this guy would pull it off every week. And then I, I respected Basita from before because of who he is. And one more amazing thing about Basita is any discussion you give him, right? He will not have this standard type of it. It can be politics, it can be literally anything under the sun. It will be something out of the way or out of the box. And this can be clearly seen in his writing. And uh, I have one special request from Basita, same as Pranitha's. I need an autograph because I don't know how famous it will be in the future. <laughs> so, <laughs> it will be nice. And one good thing about Bhasta is, as opposed to most other people that I know, we can argue vehemently on a topic. We can take drastically different stances. 
and at the end of the day we can still come back together and say this man is a friend of mine and that's all that's going to be the debate happened we had different takes we disagreed but so what all the best my guy that was this is one of the best reads that i've had in a while to be fair i'm comparing it to contracts textbooks so like all the best <laughs> Hello everyone. Uh, the short story that uh, I'll be talking about is called Overarm. Uh, this short story talks about cricket, and since cricket is my favorite sport, my brother gifted me this short story three years ago on my eleventh birthday. Uh, this uh, story was set back in 1812. Uh, it's about a boy called Joseph who's uh, obsessed with the sport called cricket. I uh, obviously had a, a slightly different perspective or, or a different vantage point to see uh, Bhasita grow into a, a story writer. Attack! Bhima opened his eyes, held up his shield and sword and ran forward, screaming at the top of his lungs. The two armies collided and the soldiers on Bhima's side were falling faster. The enemy's soldiers finally reached Bhima's line. Bhima chopped off the head of the first soldier that tried to attack him. He stabbed another in the chest and lifted him in the air and just as he was about to throw him down, he felt a spear piercing into his back. He looked down to see a spear drenched in his own blood come out of his chest. He sighed in pain, dropped his weapons and fell to his knees. He felt the spear being drawn out of his body and was kicked in the head. He fell face first and blacked out. Of course, as he died, he did not know that once the war was over, he would only be used as a stepping stone by Duryodhana. As he went to see Bhishma and Karna, he would only be a speck of dust in the vast ocean of dead bodies in the bloody battlefield. And like the moment I uh, started reading it, a couple of things uh, came to my mind. Uh, one, the language is very smooth. So you just you know pick it up and it's a light reading you go on reading it and uh, it's also not very linear and you suddenly see a spot where you know the story takes a turn and then you don't imagine that and then at the end uh, some stories sort of end abruptly leaving you to uh, sort of think and uh, you know contemplate also so, so this was uh, definitely there in the background of Especially today, we are constantly exposed to uh, radical narratives and violent, uh, oppressive rhetoric from all sides. So that was there in the background. But actually, the immediate context for this uh, story was quite different. It was almost unrelated to politics. And uh, and the general question about uh, you know our younger demography and uh, their uh, interest in reading. I think that. Visual content has become much more accessible uh, recently and through OTT and um, uh, movies or TVs and stuff like that. So, and, and visual content is much easier on your imagination than reading books. Why did you choose? Because all this reflection will essentially prompt somebody to reflect in the form of a non-fiction, in the form of in the form of non-fiction as well, essay writing, right? So to me, it's not non writing non-fiction is not as satisfying as fiction because I think it's because of this. Uh, so as, as far as I've seen, people have tendencies to look at things as either events or as narratives. There is a lot of hard aspect as well to say, you know, bring in different perspective. Uh, in the days of polarization of views, because of social media or whatever, it's absolutely important in today's society to have inclusive Yes. That can be so communicative, so effectively saying things and in such big words, that is just super. I just couldn't imagine that. I mean, he has done that. Probably all these years uh, you have been listening to us. Again, such a great moment. Uh, congratulations again. And uh, again, I feel um, um, you are blessed with, uh, with this, all your friends, I mean, they talked about you and uh, kind of uh, encouraged you as well in your uh, uh, writing of uh, the books and also the great uh, that your parents they supported you in this uh, in your journey common namdaram group the journey ga gottide nee bardira article gulu ella kalustha idda namge first ge namu ella common enen heltta idno adhe tarara irado 
ನಾವು ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ವಿ ಈ ಬಾಸಿ ತಪ್ಪಿದಾನ ಅಥವಾ ನೀನು ಬರ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಬಾಸಿ ಇದೊಂಥರ ಹೆಂಗಂದ್ರೆ ಮೌಂಟ್ ಎವರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಹತ್ತೋರಿಗೆ ಯಾಕೆ ಹತ್ತಕ್ಕೆ ಹೋದೆ ಅಂತ ಕೇಳಿ ಅಲ್ಲ ಅದ್ರ ಮೌಂಟ್ ಎವರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಹತ್ತಿದ್ರಿ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಬಟ್ ಸಿ ಆನೆಸ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಏನಂದ್ರೆ ಐ ಡಿಂಟ್ ಐ ಡಿಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕನ್ವೆನ್ಷನಲ್ ಹಾಬೀಸ್ ಐ ಡಿಂಟ್ ನನ್ನ ಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಅದರಲ್ಲ ಅಷ್ಟು ಇನ್ವಾಲ್ವ್ ಆಗಿರಲಿಲ್ಲ ಸೊ ಸೊ ಐ Uh, honestly, I had a lot of free time growing up. So, there's, uh, there's only so much time you can waste doing, you know, watching Netflix or whatever. So, it's at some point, guilt kicks in and you want to do something productive. Uh, so, I don't think... Yeah, so that's the answer. <laughs>